is my video about the GoPro Hero 5 Black. Just picked it up the other, other day. It's been about five days, I guess. Found it at my local Kodak shop. We still have those here in Thailand. I don't know if you have them or not. I'm back in the States. Haven't been back in the States for 12 years. Warranty card or something I'm supposed to take back to the store. Here's my receipt. Paid 14,900 baht plus I paid 900 baht for a SD card. Total of 16,000 baht. That's about $520 US. Um, got a bunch of. That's about it. Got some stickers for some reason. I don't know what that's for really. Got some of these sticky things. You know, you slide the. Oh, I'll have to keep them. Pull that out. This is a um, instruction manual, which is very lame. It won't even tell you how to get the um, new battery in because the battery does not come inside it. So you have to put it in, which was a problem for me and the guy at the store because we didn't know what was going on. We both had other GoPros, but didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, this is very basic. It, it tells you about three things to do, like how to turn it on. Warranty, it's a GoPro, go for it. Will you break it, we'll replace it. Covered for two years, I really doubt it. Here's some stickers. Here's the thing that came off the back of the camera. Of course, I've used it for a week, so I took that off. Save it for resale later. This is the, you know, this comes on the box, stuck to the box with some stickies. It supposedly slides in and out. I never slid it in and out, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but basically it slides in and out and goes in and out onto these things, these little clips. These are stickies. You peel the adhesive tape, you can stick it on your helmet. There's one that's curved, there's one that's flat. Okay, here's a camera. It's pretty cool. I really love it. Here's what I don't love already. And here's, I'll show you a mark that I just, I just dorked the, the, the case already. Trying to open this up, I, I figured it was like the old GoPros, right? Where you have to like flip this up in order to pull it out of the case. And you do, except that it's so damn hard. If you don't have fingers as thin as mine at the tips, you're not going to do this with your fingers. So you're going to have to use a tool. So I used a coin to try to flip it up and I scraped the case. There goes resale. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I can get it. It's literally this hard. Now my fingers are sweaty because I can't have the air on because it screws up the audio. Yeah, literally I can't, for some reason today I can't stick my fingers in there. I'm going to try the end of a paintbrush. That's still not thin enough. I'm going to try a coin again. I've already dorked it once. I might as well. Literally, it's this effing hard. It doesn't, uh, you're going to break the damn thing. This was uh, pointless to have it that goddamn hard. And uh, GoPro, take note, this thing sucks, you know, to get it out of this case. Then to get it out of the frame is also a little bit difficult, more difficult than it has been in the past for other GoPros because now you have rubber, which is awesome, right? You have rubber from here on the side, up across the top, and down to almost halfway down the other side, on the left side. And then you have a serrated edge on the plastic, which makes it grippy there as well. On the bottom, it's all serrated plastic, like, like angled cuts, you know, that make it grippy. Awesome. That's one of, the, one of the cool things. Anyway, so this video is about what are the pros and cons of the new GoPro Hero 5 Black. Number one, it's waterproof already. Doesn't need a case. This case is, um, you know, useless for underwater. It's just a frame which holds it for other activities, like when you put it on your helmet, uh, put it on the side of a car or whatever. So it's already waterproof. You can take it down like this. Not that you want to. It'd be hard to hold, but uh, you can just take it underwater like this. Good for 33 feet. Really quite cool. All of the all of the um, doors have rubber seals. You can see a nice seal. It's real soft rubber too. On all the uh, on all the ports, so it's really quite cool. 
Number two is the grippy rubber. I freaking love this. It's really nice. It's even, it's not as grippy as my Nikon uh, D620 camera, DSLR, but it's a nice grippy feeling because not only is it rubber, but it's, now that I notice, oh, okay, it's not serrated. It is. It's hard to see it. It's not serrated on the top. It's serrated on the sides. Wow, that's like the attention. It is serrated on the top. It's real hard to see with this light. Anyway, yeah, it's serrated too. So it's really grippy. I love it. Number three on the pros list is that it is very smooth and ergonomic. It's very nice. I mean, to look at it, it's really lovely, man. It's like a MacBook or something. It's like a a Hasselblad or something. It's really nicely made. All the corners are rounded, smooth. It's really quite nice. It's like a it's like a finely made piece of machinery. Number four, it has excellent voice activated features. GoPro, take a picture. GoPro, take a picture. GoPro, start recording. <laughs> GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, GoPro, start time lapse. It's really quite good, right? GoPro, stop time lapse. It's just so nice. I mean, to have this, instead of like turning it around, scrolling through a menu, like with your finger trying to, it's a touch screen, it's nice enough, but it's just, there's nothing like voice activated. It's, you know, I'm, I'm doing that for everything now. I'm on my iPhone and doing it for chat on Facebook, Messenger, it, and you know, the dictation works really well now, you know, the, I can't wait until we can do everything by voice. I want to shut off these lights, I want to make them brighter on one side, I want to shut the drapes by my voice, everything I want to do by my voice. But uh, it's a really nice touch GoPro, I love that, absolutely. Number five, it has built-in GPS, uh, which is, you can, you can leave it on all the time, or you can shut it off in the settings. But uh, yeah, it's really nice that it has it built in. Considering my Nikon, you know, a uh, $2,000 camera doesn't have it built into to my camera yet. They want me to, they want to charge me extra, like hundred some dollars extra for a plug-in, you know, that goes in a port on the side. Really nice touch as well. It's a responsive touch screen. You're not going to be able to see it here, but I'll go through it um, with my, um, with a close-up with my macro lens. But it actually does what, what you tell it to do. It's, um, it notices every click. It's kind of hard to get the swiping right. I mean, you have to start to swipe from the edge of the camera, so from the edge of the screen. So when you do, make sure that you're, you're kind of focused on that, that you're, that you're focused on doing it from the edge, and then you'll have more success. It's a little buggy, it's not perfect. Um, I haven't had a touch screen yet that's perfect, except the iPad, um, iPad uh, Air 2 is pretty good. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not bad at all. I really love it as well. If you have to have any kind of menu system, you don't want to be clicking buttons, that's for sure. Touch screen is the way to go. But voice is really the way to go. And the voice activated commands, you only have 12, which is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's a start. Hopefully they can add more, maybe even through the software, right? Number seven, the record button is on the top. It's red and it actually works. Every time you hit it, it records. It's not... Um, it gives you a little indicator light up here that you're recording. I don't know if you'll see it on there or not. It also gives a red light here in the center of my display that tells me I'm recording. And it also flashes a light back here in the upper left hand side that tells me I'm recording. So it's hard not to know you're recording. Um, one of the really cool features is, I guess, I don't know if I'll do it here real fast or not. Here, I'll shut, I'll shut it off. If you, turn the, if you turn the GoPro on from the top um, record button, it will start recording movies immediately. That's the default that it's set at. When I first grabbed it, I, t I pushed this down for a second or two. It starts recording immediately. Like I saw the red dot and I was like, what is it doing? You know, it's already recording. And uh, that's, that's the default. It's, it's going to capture video for you immediately as soon as you push this down from, a, from an off state. And then when you push it again to stop it, it will shut the, it will shut the camera down. That way, you save batteries. Now, the other way that you can do it, and the normal way you can do it, is you can turn the GoPro on from the side. The lower right side is another button. 
It's the power on off button. You can start it there. That way you can cycle through the modes. Like if you want to go to time lapse mode, you don't really want a video to start off. You just hit the side button first to turn it on, scroll through modes, swipe, swipe to different modes, and then you can start a time lapse or something else. Or what you can do, what, what the best thing is, is you just turn it on, on the power on the lower right, say GoPro start a time lapse, you know, and it'll start a time lapse for you. Or GoPro take a picture, GoPro, I'm sorry, take a photo. GoPro uh, start recording, it will shoot video for you. So that's it's super fast, it's really nice. Okay, so that was number eight, was that the auto record is set to on whenever you hit the top right button. Number nine, there's a wide range of recording resolutions. There's 4K, 2.7K, 1440P, 1080P, 720P, 480P, and then there's different, um, different views that you can grab, field of views, they call it FOV, but you can have super view, which is just uses the maximum of the entire, the entire chip. Um, you can have wide, which goes as wide as possible. You can have um, medium, which just cuts it down a little bit. You can have linear, which takes medium and takes all the distortion out of it. And not only can you see it in your video that you shot, but you see it actually in the screen. You see the whole perspective change I guess they're doing it digitally and it's just it's really nice to see it like as it will be on your video like without the distortion you know with a with a very wide angle lens it distorts everything and kind of curves it around as if it's a barrel right so they call it barrel distortion but this will take that out of it the uh, linear mode then you also have narrow which is which is just using a fraction of the um, chip right but it just gives you a kind of a close cropped uh, like like this would be probably like from here to here would be narrow mode for the GoPro from this distance that I'm on the camera. That's a 35 millimeter um, lens, so maybe that gives you some idea. Something I didn't even write down, but this coating on this on the front of this um, lens, this cover, is amazing. Like I had a sweaty finger when I first was opening the box at the store because I wanted to try it, make sure it worked before I left. And my finger, I, I remember I touched squarely, like right on it. And still, yeah, I did it again. My finger's a little bit damp, right? I touched right on it. I pull off. I don't see anything at all. It didn't take the oil from my finger. It's so weird. I'm looking with a good reflection, too. It didn't take any oil off my finger and put it on the lens, which is fantastic. Now, if you smear like this, it's on there because I've done it already. But uh, if you ju if someone just happens to touch it, it's not going to screw up your photos. That's that's really really nice. I mean, I don't know what coating they're using on there. I haven't looked it up yet, but that's fantastic. Number ten, you still have a swappable battery, and the battery compartments on the bottom are a bit hard to get to. But yeah, it's still a battery, it's still little. Look how tiny this thing is. Is this even smaller than the last one? And why does it look dorked up like that? Like it's gonna explode or something. It looks like it's not real. That's scary. Maybe that's just the way it's supposed to be, but the design, but that's a weirdness, like a not even at the bottom there. I hope that doesn't mean it's gonna blow up someday. Anyway, yeah, and it has different connectors, so it's not gonna connect, you know, the way that your old batteries do, you have to buy new batteries. They're not out yet. Uh, it takes SD, micro SD, goes right here by the battery. It's real hard to stick in there. I and there's actually like two different areas you can stick it in, so you have to be real careful. Um, yeah, so I'm not a fan of that. Again, a real nice rubber seal around the uh, around the battery compartment, though. I'm not a fan of how this goes in either, and it just feels like it's going to break at some point. This door, I'm sure it's going to break at some point. Number 11, the photos have been upgraded. The, the low light capabilities really have been upgraded. Um, whenever you compare side by side, like this one and the old GoPro, uh, you can see more detail in the shadows for sure. Um, some of you may not want that. Some, I mean, GoPro, GoPro made its business based on the high contrast look, right? Um, and there isn't much detail in the shadows. It's, it's all like sh shockingly, uh, contrasty and that makes it a really cool video you know for some things 
now they've added some contrast to it, to the videos and photos, um, which just enables you to do a little bit more in, in processing and post-processing as you shoot this stuff to the computer and you're playing around with it in Adobe or Final Cut Pro or whatever it is. You're able to tweak things a little more because you have more detail in the shadows. You could bring it out if you want. Number 12 on the Pro side is that it's compatible with everything that you ever had before for GoPro. So these connectors are all standard and that's really cool. I didn't know how they were going to do that, but they did it by just creating a, a frame case that, uh, that just plugs into all the old stuff. So yeah, you can't plug into anything with it just as it is, which would be nice, I think, if they made an inset, right? And then made, made the um, adapters so that you actually stick it into the camera. So that way you don't need this case, you know, and make this case um, uh, useless. Anyway, so it is what it is, uh, but it is compatible with all the other GoPro stuff that you ever had. Number 13, video stabilization works and works well. Um, it's really nice actually. Um, this is one of the things that separates it from the new Mavic uh, drone with 4K video is that, not, not that you can use stabilization with 4K, you cannot, but with the 1080p you can use it and it's dramatically different. It's really nice. They actually showed, um, Casey Neistat did a uh, video of him riding on cobblestones on his big um, boosted board and filming the GoPro at the same time with stabilization and it was absolutely amazing. It was uh, phenomenal. You couldn't understand like just, you know cobblestones are like duh, 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 duh. and even though his arm is acting as a, as a cushion, as a shock, um, it's absolutely amazing that he was able to get even anything usable, but it's actually beautiful. So stabilization on here is good. Uh, supposedly it's going to get better. Some pros have looked at it and said it's not even that good yet. So if it gets, I don't know how it can get better than that, but apparently, you know, people know more than me, that's for sure. <laughs> and finally, number 14 on the pro side, and there's a lot of pros, you know, I could talk about all kind of little stuff that I like, but uh, one, of the final, one of the final main points is that it has functional wind noise reduction. And the way that it accomplishes that are three different microphones. And there's one here in the lower left, there's one here in the top by the power button, by the, by the uh, record button, and then there's one here in the top right. So even if your, your finger's over top of one, you still have two microphones that the camera can actually choose from to see where the best audio is coming from. And it will choose that one and favor that one in order to give you your audio. So it's absolutely amazing, right? And then when the wind is blowing, if the wind's blowing hard from this side and affecting this microphone and maybe this one, this one's okay. You know? It's really quite good. I'm really impressed with the audio on this now. Um, especially because there's no outside case, right? You don't have to fight. You're not fighting through plastic in order to capture audio. And your audio is not coming around the back of the open plastic window. You know how it's open at the back for, for some of the cases. Um, so the audio has taken a real step up and I'm loving that too. Uh, it's definitely my favorite. It's actually my favorite camera. I'm getting rid of everything. I, I sold my Glide Cam HD 2000 yesterday. I sold uh, my old GoPro, uh, Hero 4, and I was going to sell this. Like, I bought it with the intention that I will sell it, right? But I'm not going to sell it. I'm just going to keep it. I really love it. Okay, this video is taking so long, isn't it? But I do want to cover everything. There's a, there's a ton of stuff to cover. GoPro Hero 5 cons. Reasons you might not want to buy it. The batteries are incompatible, like I said. They don't fit, you have to buy new batteries, that means you have to buy a new charger, you know, like the dual charger where you can charge two batteries at once. There is nothing like that at the moment. Uh, nobody can find it anyway, everybody's complaining about it. But yeah, you're gonna need new batteries. I mean, you're gonna need extra batteries because this, this little battery is good for about one and a half hours is what I found. I shoot a lot of video and time lapse and uh, it doesn't last for two hours like some other people are saying. Uh, for different things, it might last two hours. Number two on the cons list, weak batteries, as I said, I mean, it's just, they're too small. I don't know why. I would take a little bit bigger, put a half inch on the camera, 
put a, put a quarter inch on the top, it's still basically the same thing. Everybody can hand hold it, it's not a big difference. And just add more battery, man. Make the battery like this big, you know, a little bit thicker. Make it last twice as long, at least, at least give us like three hours, you know. So I'm, I'm sad about that. The weak batteries has always been a problem because they're just so small. And just the unit is power hungry now. It's powering this lovely screen and everything. It's really quite a power hungry thing. Uh, it needs a bigger battery for sure. Number three on the cons list is that the touch screen is not perfect by far. Uh, I, I use it when I have to. I don't, I like it because I don't have to push buttons, you know, but Honestly, it's just not that good, I, I'm, but I'm happy to have it. I mean, I'm, I'm conflicted for sure. It's good and it's not. Uh, I think on the, on the whole, it could be a whole lot better. So I'm going to say it's a negative just because I want more. I want more perfection from it. It's not perfect by any means and I want it to be better. Number four, the battery draining screen. It's a... Uh, it's lovely to look at, it's pretty high definition, it shuts off pretty frequently to save some battery, but still, you know, it's, it's, just the whole, it's just the whole mix of the weak battery and then the ton of functions and then the screen on the back to, to um, add to it. So just the whole system needs more battery, that's basically it. Number five on the cons list, the voice commands are not perfect. You know, I speak pretty clearly, but Occasionally it doesn't work, or maybe I'm saying the wrong thing, I'm still not sure. I haven't even looked at the list yet, I just say, I did look at, uh, online I saw a couple commands like, Shh, GoPro, start recording. Didn't work. GoPro, start recording. Maybe it's because I'm in a weird mode or something. GoPro, start recording. Yeah, you can say it like that. GoPro, stop recording. It worked, and I said it in a weird way, right? So sometimes it will surprise you and like, and work. Sometimes it won't. And if you stagger your like GoPro, stop recording. It's just you have to say it pretty clearly. You have to say it at a pretty steady rate, but it'll it'll get a lot of it. Uh, it's not perfect. Hopefully uh, with software they will fix it and make it even more perfect. Number six on the cons list: <laughs> another battery issue. It takes time to charge these tiny batteries. Again, I don't know what the problem is. My iPhone charges within a half hour. I have probably 60-70% of battery on my iPhone. It takes this thing almost a full hour to charge up, which to me is ridiculous because it's this big. You know, I don't, I don't understand. There's probably something, um, some good reason for it. I want that reason removed, and I want, <laughs> and I want to be able to charge it. This little battery I want to charge in 10 minutes, that's all. So something's wrong there. I don't know if they're saving money on the batteries, but hopefully that improves over, the, over time uh, in the next iteration for sure. Number seven on the cons list. I don't know, I see this smartphone connection thing as a gimmick because I, I, I don't even see a reason I, can, I should connect it to my smartphone. I don't understand why I would ever do that. Uh, it has like, I have a 32 gig card in here I have 64 gigs on my phone. That's half my storage. Plus, I already have 4K video on the phone, so I'm shooting that all the time. I've got at least 32 gigs on here already. There's no way I can even transfer this to that. And then I gotta kind of keep it, keep track in my mind, like, oh, I, I transferred everything except these files. When you start doing that, you're screwed up. I've, I've done it for for a year now with this other computer because it only has a 128 gig hard drive. So. I don't get I don't get the why would I ever need to transfer here? I don't want to edit on this thing. I don't want to edit movies or uh, pictures on this thing. So I don't really understand. To me, it's a gimmick. I don't see a, a point for it. I just shoot stuff straight from this to the computer, and I'm able to grab it all at once and do that. And I'm able to edit on the computer, which is what I'd rather do anyway. Number eight on the cons list is that. And when I do transfer it to the computer, the, the apps for, from GoPro are not really that great. I'd much rather use Final Cut Pro, Adobe, um, my video, I mean my photo editing software. I'd much rather use the stuff I already have. The GoPro, I mean it's a nice addition I guess for somebody that doesn't have any software, but if you have it, just skip the GoPro apps. They're just pretty annoying too because they're trying to grab your 
every time you connect, they're trying to grab all your photos and stuff. And then again, you got to remember what transferred, what didn't. Did everything transfer? You know, it's just kind of a mess for me. So really, should you buy the, the new GoPro based on the pros and cons? For me, it was an absolute no-brainer. I had to get it. I wanted to review it. I was going to review it and sell it. Now that I have it, I really love it. It's the best one ever by far, and I can't even, I can't even find another product that's even close. Um, I love the build quality. Most of all, I love the voice commands. So I love all the functions that it does. I love uh, all the different field of views. I love the different, I love 4K video, of course. I love the three microphones. I love the sound quality that it, that it jacked up recently. But what I really love is the voice commands. I love to be able to, I could be walking down the street and just, you know, hold it to my side and say, GoPro, take a picture, GoPro, take a photo. And it will take a photo of something that, I just took a photo. But it will take a photo of something, I don't have to point it at somebody like this and, and go like this and click my, my finger, you know. I can just say, GoPro, take a photo. It will take a photo, like it just did, uh, covertly, right? I mean, I need that a lot. Back in New York City, I was, a, I was a paparazzi photographer. I took a lot of photos of homeless people and whatever. But this would have been like a, a godsend, man, if I would have had a, a voice activated uh, Nikon DSLR about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Anyway, I love the camera. I think you should get it. There's a hell of a lot of pros and cons, but I think the pros outweigh the cons by, by a great amount. Go ahead and get it. I think you're going to absolutely love it. If you don't and you want to sell it at a reasonable price, I might be in the market for another one. <laughs> All right, cheers. Works when it has to work. Does what I love it to do. I love this thing. I'm keeping it. I think everybody should have it. Rush out to the store and get one. Hurry up. They're flying off the shelves.